Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. Today I will talk about the builder design pattern. Let's start with a little bit of motivation. So we are building a pizza application. One step of all the process of ordering a pizza is building the actual pizza, choosing the pizza ingredients. We need to choose the dough type. We need to choose whether the pizza will be thin or thick. We need to choose the toppings on the pizza. But if no toppings were chosen for the pizza, it will add automatically the default cheese topping. And we will want to choose how to cut our pizza, whether it will be six slices or eight slices. And after we finish building the pizza, we would like to send this pizza with all this configuration back to the server for the order to be executed. So let's start by defining the pizza object. So our pizza object will be an interface pizza and it will have four properties. It will have the number of slices, which will be a number. We'll have the property set whether it is a thin pizza or not. We'll have the dot type set, which will be a, an enum. And we will have the uh, toppings, which will be an array of topping set to the pizza object. And let's just create the enums for the dot type for it to compile and an enum for the topping just for the code to compile. Now some of these properties will have default values for example is thin should be set to false if it is not set by the user the number of slices should be 8 if it is not set by the user and the toppings will have a default value of uh, okay I'm writing it wrong dot type it will have a default topping of cheese okay if no topping were set by the user so if the user sets some kind of topping for example mushrooms will not add another topping but if the user doesn't set any topping at all will add the default topping cheese and yeah our pizza will be able to be created without any cheese so what is actually our problem here our problem is to create the pizza object somehow and verify that all the properties are set like for example the doll type must be set it doesn't have any default value and other properties they have default values so we need to set the value if the user didn't choose any value for this property so the first solution that you might think about is creating some kind of class that represents this pizza object and when the user chooses the properties in the end we will create this class this pizza class what's the problem with it the problem is we will need some kind of way passing the properties inside our application because well choosing the number of slices the dot type uh, might and the for example toppings might be on different screens in our application we will need to pass this information from one screen to another somehow and later on we will see how we'll do it using the builder pattern but for now simply by using the class the pizza class we won't be able to do it in a simple contained manner and it might cause uh, some problems moreover when you want to create a an instance of the pizza you will have to pass some of the properties like for example if the user haven't chosen anything he will need to pass only the dot type Otherwise, if the user chosen, like for example, the toppings and the dot type, we'll need to create an, some kind of constructor that receives the two of them. And in other case, when he chose the dot type and number of slices, we'll need another overload of a constructor. And any different variation of these properties, we'll need some kind of overload of the constructors. And this will create a mess of constructors you can think of this like this example has only four properties and it already has a lot of options of how to combine the properties to, to set to the constructor but you can think of your examples in your projects with the objects that have more properties some of them 
uh, must be set, some of, of them have default values and it can become very tedious and very complicated to create all of these constructor overloads. So another solution you might think of is creating the pizza class instance without any uh, constructor parameters with a default constructor that sets all these properties, the number of slices, the is thin, to the default values and adding setter to the pizza object for the user to be able to change it. The problem with this, well it actually has two problems. One problem is that not all of the properties have default values, for example the dot type doesn't have any default value and it will be set to undefined, meaning that we now have a pizza object that it is created and it is in a wrong configured state, meaning that if someone by mistake sees this pizza object somewhere and thinks it is in a valid object, he can by mistake send it and use it somewhere and it will cause a bug in our application just because this pizza object is already created but it is an invalid state. Another problem that we have here is that the toppings, the default value for the toppings is a topping containing only cheese. But if now we add another topping, for example mushroom, we need to know whether this cheese topping is a default topping or a topping that the user has chosen for his first topping because the user can choose the cheese as a topping as well. So we'll need some kind of other state specifying whether the toppings has been set by the user or not and whether this property is true or not. It will be uh, by this property we will decide what to do with the mushroom, uh, the add topping with the mushroom. Uh, because if it is the first time we will need to remove the cheese and add the mushroom otherwise we will need to leave the cheese and add the mushroom. So now let's see how we can solve these problems with the builder pattern. So let's create a class pizza builder and what this class will have it will have all these properties as private private Okay, these properties will be private to him and the dot type, the toppings will be initialized with an empty array and what we will have is a setter for each and every property here. So let me just move it. So we'll have a set number of slices which receives number of slices which is an a number okay and it sets the number of slices to be number of slices and the same thing for other properties it sets the is thin is thin also it sets the dot type set dot type which will be a dot type dot type the is thin is actually a boolean and we will have an add topping method which receives a topping which is a topping and what it does it pushes to the toppings the best topping okay and for convenience, what we will do is from each of these methods, of these functions, we will return, return, come on, return this. What it will allow us to do, it will allow us to chain these functions like this. So, for example, if we'll have a new pizza builder we will be able to set his thin to be true set number of slices to be for example six and uh, set the dot type to be you're probably not seeing it so let me just move it like this like this and the dot type dot 
type to be, I don't know, healthy. So let me just add this dot type to be healthy. And of course, I've put the cheese in the dot type. So this will enable me to chain all the setters in a one single chain. And the final thing that we will have in this builder, we'll have a public build function that will actually return our pizza. For now, I will not implement it. And how we'll use it, we will, in the final stage, we'll use it to actually create our pizza object. Okay, so we create the pizza by the builder. We set all the properties that we want, which can be uh, in any permutation uh, of the properties with any values of the properties. We can uh, add topping multiple times. Like for example, I have only cheese, but so let's use the cheese topping. Here I can edit any times that I want. Uh, many times and I can add many toppings and this allows me to build the pizzas all, with all kind of settings that I want and actually what it also allows me to do is to create this builder object and pass it from one screen to another and it holds all the information of the pizza that we want to build and each screen in our application can use this builder and set different properties like for example the screen that chooses the topping can add all the toppings at once the screen that sets the number of slices will use the set number of slices and the final screen that sends the order to the order server he will use the build function to create our pizza object and will send it to the server now what this means is that at any stage in every screen we do not have a pizza object created and the only pizza objects that we have are pizza objects that were returned from this build function. This means that all the validations that we want to do we, we can do them inside of this build function like for example we can verify if the is thin is not set Okay, because the user didn't choose the whether the pizza is thin or not. Remember, it, it is, should be set to false by default. The same thing is for number of slices. If it is undefined, let me just use triple equals. We will set the number of slices to be 8 by default. And uh, if the dot type is undefined it is actually an error so we can throw new error uh, like dull type must be set okay and for the toppings if the toppings length is less than one meaning the user didn't add any topping we, what we will do we will add the cheese topping as the default topping okay and this allows it allows us to verify all the properties of the pizza object in one single place the build function and you can think of many other ways of properties that affect other properties like for example if one property is set another property shouldn't be set or if one property is set the other property must have another value or different kind of relations properties this all of these validations you can do inside the build function and the final stage of the build function is actually returning the pizza object which is very simple it is just using all the properties of the builder and dot type this dot type okay and after we do it our build function returns the pizza object with all the properties set properly and validated. So the builder pattern is very very useful when you have a complex way to create object. Uh, some of the complex ways might be separating the, the places which define 
the object values, like in this case with the pizza object, we had different screens setting different properties of the object. And in this case, we used the builder pattern to set different property in different screens. And finally, after all the properties are set, we created the pizza object. Also, it is very, very useful if you want to be able to validate the object that you want to create before you're creating it. Like in our case, we created the pizza object as the plain JavaScript object, as a Pojo, and we validated all the properties of this object before we actually created it. So if you want to do stuff like this, the builder pattern is also very useful. And the final thing that is, in my opinion, the, the winner of all the things is the ability to set the properties one by one and not create a huge overload of the constructor uh, that creates an object in different ways. The builder pattern allows you to set different properties and different groups of properties in different places that you want to create the object. Now, because of what I just said, the builder pattern is different from a constructor and a, from an abstract factory design pattern. And if you don't know what an abstract factory is, you can watch it in a link down below or in some corner of this video. So it is different from the abstract factory and the constructor because the builder allows you to, to spread the creation of an object to different places of your application and the abstract factory makes you create the object in a single step like if you use the builder you can pass it from one function to another and add more properties and finally somewhere in other place of your application you can call the build function and when you use the abstract factory you have to to collect all the properties in a single place and call the abstract factory and from your side of uh, like if you look at the code after you call the abstract factory the object is already created you have watched an episode about the builder design pattern let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below you can watch more design pattern videos by clicking over here or if you trust youtube to know what you really want to see click over here if you want to watch more code related videos check out my channel and feel free to subscribe see you later on programmers